Hey guys, Brian with Jones in the Go, and today we're talking brakes. So we're, today we're going to talk about the brakes that we chose for our new RV and we also put on our last RV. So stick around and we're going to go through why we chose this brand of brakes. Alright, welcome back. So today I'm with Chuck from D-Max Brakes. Chuck is the CEO of D-Max and we just happened to time this well this month to catch him here in Elkhart County and we're going to talk about the D-Max brand brakes and you guys are going to find out why after I did all my research this is the brand brakes I chose for my RVs. Uh, you probably heard me say once before I finally got off my butt and upgraded our last fifth wheel to disc brakes and what motivated me to do that it's something I wanted to do for a long time but what actually motivated me to do that is Tina said you know what I think I'm ready to start towing the RV and the first time I let her tow it was in a state park where they had a long road back to the actual campground and I thought that's a perfect place for her to get the feel of. And as we came to the first stop sign I quickly realized I had failed to warn her that she's got to start, start stopping quicker with all that load behind us. And that's when I said, okay, disc brakes, it's time, we're doing this. Yeah. And so I started my research, we en ended up with D-Max brakes. So we're going to go over some of the features of these brakes and you guys will see why I chose this brand and this is the brand that will always be on one of my trailers. So Chuck, first of all, where did D-Max start? Where, how did that come about? Well, it actually, uh, we started 13 years ago, but I'm not new to the industry. It's been 31 years. I was uh, president and half owner of Kodiak for 18 years. I left 13 years ago, saw a need for a different style, a unique brake that could really get into the military. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we did that. We made some uh, obvious changes to anything that's on the market right now. And we passed all the military tests and uh, then went to the next level and got with the, the CSA test. But uh, I think that, you know, 13 years ago, I just saw a need for, for better braking. And uh, before that, with Kodiak, we, we were the first ones actually to come out with a disc brake in general in the industry. Which, We'll go into that later as far as drive sure. versus disc. Right, yeah. And so, so you know, uh, you know in our conversations that we actually did a before and after test um, with our previous RV, which had electric drum brakes on it. And we reduced our stopping distance by 55%. Literally locked the brakes up in the parking lot of E-Trailer. And I was impressed. Um, so I was there for the whole install and watched the whole install. And it just it kept impressing me the more I saw these brakes go together and go on my rig and seeing some of the features. So let's talk about let's just talk about the this hub assembly. What's different about your hub assembly versus some the of the competitors? Yeah, so there's there's quite a few differences. I mean we you can see if you can see on the face of the hub, we, we have all our markings as far as minimum thickness and then we even put our bearing information on there. Uh, the performance aspect of it is uh, we have a patented vent hole design, and so basically as you're driving, it's going to let you cool the rotor off. Uh, if you're sitting, it's going to let the water drain out, and as you plate or coat anything, you submerge it in a tank. And with these air pockets, it dissipates the, the air out, and so it allows 100% coverage. The other advantages are the rotor. Uh, veins itself you can see we have twice as many veins and it's about 30 percent thicker than the competition so there again that that part of it will dissipate the heat quicker and allows the brake to cool and better perform and your brake pads last longer the whole braking system since you mentioned brake pads let's talk about the difference in your brake pads okay they come with d yeah brakes. yeah so uh, most over the road brakes you see in the automotive industry most of them have uh, semi-metallic and then we went a step further uh, a few years back to go to ceramic and then we we've been doing research for probably six years before that on even a better performing uh, friction lining compound and with that said in 2023 we came up with Kevlar Obviously, everybody knows about Kevlar. But Kevlar. Well, yeah. as a retired firefighter, we yeah, had a lot of gear that was Kevlar. Gear, yeah. Kevlar and heat dispensation go together. Yes. And I, that's one story that I tell people all the time is um, when it comes to why did I want better brakes? And 
obviously if I already mentioned that Tina was going to start pulling the rig. But as a firefighter, I've responded to countless accidents over the years. And one of the most common things I would always hear from people, especially if they were at fault in the accident, I just couldn't get stopped in time. I just couldn't get stopped in time. And so that was one of the reasons And these, these pads, all of these things that you're talking about is really what sold me. A guy who had to clean those messes up for 30 years yeah. and seen the results of it, this was important to me to have the best of the best on my rig. Yeah. Uh, and so that is one of the reasons when the, the Kevlar yeah, the pads Kevlar. too. I mean, it hit home for me because Kevlar yeah. and heat, dispensating yep. heat, it just makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and the, and the performance yeah. of it. I mean, we've had independent tests. It's about 28% shorter stopping than anything on the market. Uh, and we, we, we blew that out of the water yeah. with ours, our test. Yeah. And so, um, let's talk about the actuator that you guys have developed yeah. for this. So, when we first met, we first talked, we started talking about this actuator, and I didn't really pick up on that whole two second delay that the actuator that was installed on my first RV um, had that like two second delay. Two seconds is yeah. huge as yeah. far as distance when you hit the brakes. Oh yeah, actually if you look at it, it's at, at 30 miles an hour it's 44 feet per second. At 80, it's 88 feet per second. And it can only take feet. a foot yeah. or two to so, avoid a collision. Yes, yes. So that's important. Yeah. And so um, when the independent suspension was put on our brand new rig, the factory uses a different brand actuator. And um, fortunately we have the new D-Max actuator getting ready to go on here at More Right tomorrow. So I'm really excited yeah. about that. I'm really excited. So let's talk a little bit about um, what the difference is between the competition and these actuators. Yeah, yeah. So the the actuator there again we've we've been working with the company on that for, for years and we finally got it perfected and uh, it, it's it was being sold in Australia for about seven years. And we took it to an independent lab here and we've been running tests and trying to, you know, what can we do and what can we make different? And obviously safety and performance is one of the top. So with that being said, we, one of the things, like you're saying, the response time. So we built the, uh, the CAD CAM adapter into the actuator. You know, our competitors, you have to buy the actuator, then you gotta buy an adapter to talk to the tow vehicle. Mm -hmm. We have it built in. Uh, the other thing is it's a German motor that's been, you know, tried and tested for 90 years. It's a, it's a, a motor that's it's got a faster response, it's got a quicker release, and uh, the voltage, you know, from the voltage to the amperage to the pressure, it has the most stable of all three. So it's, it's really, you know, it's top of the line, you get a quicker response, you get a faster release, and uh, it works hand in hand with the tow vehicle. The other thing we're working on is, is having it as an app on your phone, the controller. So you can, uh, and we talked about that yesterday, yeah. how yeah. even if you're installing the brakes and bleeding the brakes, you can be at the actual caliber, caliber. and activate those and bleed those yes. brakes and not have somebody helping you. So if you're one of those do-it-yourself guys yeah. and it's just you that day, you can you can, oh, yeah, you you can, can get it done. Yeah. And yeah. so that's impressive. It, it just, it, the more I learn about these brakes, the D-Max brakes, the more impressed I am and the more grateful I am that this is this is what's on my yeah. rig. So when yeah. my wife gets behind the wheel of that, that dually and pulls that 43 foot yeah. uh, RV now, I know she's gonna get it stopped. And yeah. you know, like I've said before, if I said it once, I've said it a hundred times. One close call is one close call too many. And we've had far more than one. Yeah. And yeah. so like, we just talked about that distance. Just that one foot can avoid that crash. Oh, yeah. 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 Avoid that. So, so is there anything else about these that you want? You know, just you know, we've always been about safety, performance, reliability, and that's we're constantly you know making changes, doing you know even simple stuff like we have all the laser writing on the front as far as how to bleed it, uh, how much to torque the bolts to. We just do things different than anybody else. You know, that's one thing when they were installing these on my last RV, the technician that was inside, he just kept raving about that. He's like, look at this. Nobody does this. Yeah. The information's right there. He yeah. didn't have to go looking for it. Yeah. And another thing that um, when our RV was being built, we were there. If you haven't seen that, um, 
that video of the independent suspension being put on our RV. I'm going to link it up here. You can go look at it. I'll link it to the end of the video as well. Uh, the guys in the factory that were putting this on and they said, we've never seen these brakes before. And I just kind of chuckled and I said, yeah, get used to it because yeah. the more people that learn about these, the more people are going to want them. And the one thing that he pointed out was the size of the studs. Yeah, yeah. These are 916s and they're what, half inch on the competitors. Yeah. And he said, you could just look at those and see yeah. that this is a beefier brake assembly. And you know, you know, we put our new rig over the scales the day we got it, we're over 15,000 pounds. Wow. That was before we're fully loaded. So stuff like this and beefiness like yeah. this just gives me that peace of mind. Yeah. This thing's gonna hold together. And, and we've seen videos of other YouTubers where they've lost a wheel going down the road because yeah. they sheared their, yeah. their bolts off. Yeah, I'm pretty and confident I, that's not gonna happen. Oh yes, no, no. <laughs> so. And I think like, you know, we've been talking, you know, for months about it, but we're here to try to convert the RV industry from drum to disc, you know? Well, I mean, I hope you're successful that. because now that I've converted, my opinion has changed. Before it was like, oh, okay, they must be good enough. Yeah. We're getting stopped. Like I said, I've had some of them close calls where I've been my foot on the floor and I'm cramming the brake controller yeah. just trying to get stopped yeah. at the time. I've not had to come even close to doing that with, with these yeah. brakes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I'm hoping, you know, my attitude has changed towards it completely. And I kind of have the opinion now, if you're going to have anything over 30 feet, you got to have disc brakes on your RV yeah. because you need to get that stopped. Yeah. The sad reality is there's a lot of people out there on the road with you. Yeah. And those people don't understand, you don't stop on a dime. Yeah. I mean, compared to their little Kia, this is like trying to stop a freight train. Yeah, they don't, they don't allow the distance. They don't at all. And so I'm just kind of glad that uh, these are on the scene now and these are an option. Well, and that's what we jokingly said yesterday about it. You know, it's like that's 1970 technology, the drum brake is. It is. You know, it's yeah. 50 years old. There's a reason why the automotive industry switched. And now the trailers are getting bigger and heavier. We, they are. We need a better, better alternative, you know, to stop these tow vehicles and break. I mean, trailers. So. Yeah. When we started camping, when our kids were little, you know, pop-up campers and 25-foot travel trailers with no slide-outs were kind of the norm. Yeah. And now the norm is rolling in with a 40-foot five slide-outs, 15,000-pound RV. So you're right. The industry is going to have to change with yeah. with that. And I'm hoping that's the direction they're going. Now that we're seeing OEMs installing things like independent suspension and disc brakes more often, yeah. hopefully that just becomes the standard and we see a lot less wrecks on the road. So, yeah. so Chuck, I really appreciate you taking the time while we're here yeah, at Brian. Elkhart at the same time. Um, got to spend some time together and learn even more about your product. I'm really excited about the fact that tomorrow morning that new actuator goes on our new Montana. Yeah. And so I'm really, really, Looking forward to that travel day, that first travel day, so I can feel that. Yeah. And I'll probably text you when I, I get to the say, first I'm rest stop. I'm looking forward to the report back. <laughs> I'm actually going to give you one. So, yeah. so Chuck, thanks again, and I yes. thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. And um, D Max Breaks. Um, if you want more information, you have a website. Yeah. D Max.com. D Max.com, and you make these for all different size axles. 3,500 all the way up to 16,000 pounds. So, 16,000 pounds. And, and even if you're not in the RV industry, in the marine industry, yep. the boat trailer. Yep. 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 So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to be notified for the next video. And we'll keep you guys uh, informed of how things are going with our new breaks, not only here on YouTube, but Instagram. So, watch us over on Instagram at Joseph to go as well. And we'll see you in the next video.